Once you have Kali up and running and connected to the Internet, you will want to update the Linux operating systems and its tools to the latest releases. You can update Kali when it is running from a hard drive, in a virtual machine, and even while running from the live DVD. But keep in mind that the updates to Kali booted from a live DVD are performed only in memory and not written to the live DVD disk itself, so you will need to reapply all updates every time you boot Kali from the live DVD. In Linux, software programs are distributed as packages and are installed, updated, and removed using a package management system. The management system I will be demoing is the Advanced Package Tool, called APT or APT. APT is actually a collection of tools forming a package management system commonly used on Debian GNU Linux. Although there are many package managers available for Linux, APT is the only one I will be demoing in this course. The primary tool in apt is apt-git. apt-git installs, updates, and removes debian.deb package files, which are usually found in remote software package repositories on the Internet. Packages may be installed and updated from local storage devices, too, but for this demo, we will need Kali to be connected to the Internet. For updating packages, apt-git will retrieve a listing of the package index files of multiple remote repositories determine which packages are already installed on the local Linux system and which installed packages are not up to the latest release. The user may then choose to install the latest updates of those packages and possibly install and update other packages that the updated package requires. Before we head to the demo, I must mention that apt-git must run with root privileges. If you are not running in a Linux user account with root privileges, to use apt-git, you must use the sudo command from an account listed in the etc. sudoers file. Because all of the demos in this course are run with accounts that have root privileges, you won't see me using the sudo command, but you should be aware of it and understand what it does. In this demo, we will see the steps for updating Kali Linux packages using the command line, how to add new software package repositories, and we will also cover one way to update VMware tools for Linux. In this demo, I will be showing you how to use the apt-get tool to update Kali from the command line. To follow along with this demo, your Kali needs an internet connection. We can get the basic command line help for apt-get using the H flag. You can see the basic use of apt-get is with a single command verb and one or more option flags followed by one or more optional package names. More detailed information on apt-get is available on the manual page. Now let's have a look at the apt-get commands that you will most need to know. Performing an apt-get update is very simple. The update command downloads the most recent index list of packages from the software repositories listed in the file etc. apt-sources.list. The update command then synchronizes the package index files on Kali with the index files of these package repositories. This is how apt-get will know what packages are not up to date. Here we see the default package repositories included with Kali. The repository of any package you want to install in Kali must be present in this list. A missing repository and misspelling of the package name are two common reasons for the failure to update or install a package. If you need to add a new repository to the sources.list file for downloading additional packages, you can do it from the command line. This command adds the Kali bleeding edge repository to the list. This repository contains daily builds for frequently updating tools. It's worth adding to your repos list. You should always perform an apt-kit update prior to installing or updating any packages on your Kali Linux system or adding a new repository to make sure you have the latest package information. To perform an update of the packages already installed on Kali, use the apt-get upgrade command. We see here that 124 packages are to be upgraded, no packages are to be installed or removed, and 14 packages will not be upgraded. The packages that will not be upgraded are listed after the the following packages have been kept back line. This is because the upgrade command will not install new packages, remove unused packages, or make changes to packages that share dependencies with other packages that are not being upgraded. The upgrade command is the safest way to update packages installed on Kali without the risk of breaking other packages in the process. 
Now let's take a look at another upgrade command, the apt-get dist upgrade. We see here that 138 packages are to be upgraded, 21 packages are to be installed, 2 packages are to be removed, and no packages will not be upgraded. The dist upgrade command not only updates all installed packages, but will also install all new packages that are dependencies of other packages, removes unused packages, and will make changes to packages that share dependencies with other packages that are not being upgraded. Confusing? Let me just say that the dist upgrade command is the best way to perform a full upgrade of all repository packages installed in Kali, but it runs the risk of breaking other installed packages in the process. So should you use the upgrade or the dist upgrade command? That choice is up to you really. The upgrade option is safer to use in that it will not upgrade a package if changing the dependencies of other packages is required. This practically guarantees that performing an apt-get upgrade command will never break anything. On the other hand, the dist upgrade command is riskier to use because it will do whatever it takes to keep Kali synchronized with the latest repository updates, but it is the best single way to keep your Kali system thoroughly up to date. Also realize that the apt-get has no rollback command, so automatically undoing the results of an upgrade or dist upgrade command is not possible, at least not by using the app tools. Now, let me show you a good command line that you can use for updating your Kali environment. This command line runs apt-get four times using four different commands. The clean command is used to clear out the local repository of previously downloaded page files to free up disk space. The update command downloads the latest remote repository index files. The upgrade command performs the safest upgrades that are the least likely to fail or cause problems. The dist upgrade command upgrades all remaining packages that are not up to date, but could possibly fail during the update or cause dependency problems after the update. The Y flag tells apt-get to use the default action at each prompt. The double ampersand operators are used to chain all the calls together, so you will only execute the next command in the chain if the previous command ran successfully. So if the first command fails, the next command will not be run and the entire command execution chain would stop. With this command chain, each command would execute in turn regardless of the success result of the previous command, which is not what we want. The Y flag and double ampersands are very handy when starting a lengthy update right before going to lunch. Before we end this demo, I want to make you aware of the presence of VMware tools for Linux that is pre-installed on the Kali VM. VMware Tools is a collection of utilities used to enhance the usability of virtual machines running in VMware virtual environments. The enhancements VMware Tools provide includes improving screen resolution and audio capabilities for the guest operating system, allowing easy copying of files and Windows clipboard content between the guest and host operating systems, and easier movement of the mouse cursor in and out of the virtual environment. Having VMware tools pre-installed in Kali makes Kali a less aggravating virtual experience to use. The VMware tools that comes pre-installed in the Kali 1.1.0 VM is fairly up to date, but occasionally you will want to check for updates and apply them. The standard way to check for a VMware tools update is by logging into the Kali VM as root and using the player manage update VMware tools menu item. If an update is available, the VMware Tools update will be downloaded as an ISO file and automatically mounted. This part of the update is easy enough, but the procedure for applying the update in a Linux guest OS is a very manual command line procedure with many prompts to address. It's nothing that an experienced Linux user can't handle, but for a less seasoned Linux user, it's advisable to try the default installation configuration and hope that works. Let's try that now. VMware Player has finished downloading the VMware Tools for Linux update and has mounted it as a CD. We now need to copy the contents of that CD to a temporary directory, change to that directory, and expand the tar file. Now we change into the VMware Tools distrib subdirectory and run the installation Perl script using the dash default flag. This causes the installation script to accept all the default options and saves you from hitting the enter key a couple of dozen times. 
It, this takes a while, so we'll jump ahead. There, back from lunch. When the patching ends, the VMware Tools Update ISO is automatically ejected from the virtual CD-ROM for you. To check if VMware Tools is actually installed, you can try running the VMware Tools command to check if an update to VMware Tools is available. I also recommend restarting Kali to make sure everything is properly started, and don't forget to remove the CD files from the temp directory. In this demo, we covered how to update installed packages using the apt-get command, how to add a software package repository to the sources.list file, performing apt-get, update, upgrade, and dist-upgrade commands, and how to chain update commands together. We also had a look at VMware tools for Linux and one way to update it on Kali.